Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, on the 75th anniversary of the Allied victory in World War II and the Soviet Union's victory in the Great Patriotic War. His Majesty the King offered his best wishes of further progress and prosperity to Russia, praised the deep-rooted and friendly relations between the two countries and people, and hailed their ongoing progress. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of the Russian Federation Vladimir Putin on the 75th anniversary of the Allied victory in World War II and the Soviet Union's victory in the Great Patriotic War. His Royal Highness the Premier wished the Russian leadership and people for their progress and prosperity, praised the strong bond between Bahrain and Russia and their ongoing cooperation. His Royal Highness the Premier also sent a cable of congratulation to Russia's Premier Mikhail Mushastin. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, sent a cable of congratulations to the President to the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, on the 75th anniversary of the Allied victory in World War II and the Soviet Union's victory in the Great Patriotic War. His Royal Highness offered his congratulations to the Russian leadership and people, extending wishes of progress and prosperity to Russia and praising the strong bonds between Bahrain and Russia and their ongoing cooperation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also sent a cable of congratulation to Russia's Premier Mikhail Mushastin. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the meeting of the National Anti-Drug Committee, which was attended by the Minister of Education, the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, the Minister of Information, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, the Capital Governor, the Inspector General of the Ministry of Interior, and members of the Committee of Representatives of the government organizations. The Interior Minister welcomed the attendees and underlined that the present conditions require the implementation of all precautionary measures to help in containing the coronavirus outbreak. He praised the efforts in fighting narcotics, which have resulted in completing the first phase of the national plan to combat drugs with a success rate of 97%. He highlighted the finding of the investigation committee formed by the cabinet about the Hamad Town Intermediate Girls, Girls School, which denied the existing of drug abuse phenomena or drug dealing network in the school. The committee then discussed the items on its agenda, starting with the committee's approval of the location of the planned hospital for the rehabilitation of drug users. The Minister of Health then affirmed the ongoing support of various programs that engage with the Bahraini youth and encourage them to avoid using drugs. The program Maman was then discussed, which benefits 82% of schools. The Minister of Interior congratulated the Ministry of Education and the organizer of the program for the success of Maman and expressed a hope that the youth will engage with the program, especially given that the program is representing the national identity. For his part, the Minister of Youth and Sports affirmed the importance of holding lectures and training the youth. The Ministry of Education then affirmed the importance of legislating against drug abuse and forming a committee to report on the matter. The Minister of Interior also affirmed the importance of taking all measures to ensure the safety of all, Why the Minister of Information Affairs said that raising awareness is crucial. The Inspector General of the Ministry of Interior affirmed the importance of uh, cooperating in this field and said that the police stations are well equipped in dealing with the matter, while the Minister of Education agreed and underlined the importance of cooperating across ministries to raise awareness of the issue. The Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports then presented the second edition of the youth program entitled Tekatov. The Minister of Justice then affirmed the importance of coordination in this regard. At the end of the meeting, the Ministry of Interior expressed thanks and appreciation to the members of the committee to ensure the success of the country's efforts in combating drugs. To mark the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, the Southern Government organized a remotely held event called Towers a Safe Society in cooperation with various security entities. The Southern Governor, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa, welcomed the attendees who included various officials and officers, officers along with Deputy Governors Brigadier Isa Thamr Dosiri. The Governor praised the joint efforts to combat narcotics, to raise awareness and to highlight the, sec the security responsibilities as per the directive 
representatives of the Minister of Interior. The director of the Anti-Narcotic Directorate, Mohamed Naimi, expressed the efforts to combat drugs and crime and affirmed the ongoing cooperation with the southern government. Major Hamad al Meza highlighted the efforts of the directorate, of which the meeting represents a part. For his part, the director of the Ma'an program, Ali Amini, presented the efforts that are being carried out in this regard, which include the participation of 45 schools where awareness was raised through lectures. He praised the cooperation with the southern governor in helping in carrying out these efforts. The Rafah Police Station Chief Lieutenant Chief Sheikh Salman bin Ahmed Al Khalifa presented the efforts of the security forces in combating crime and praised the cooperation of the southern governor and his keen support in all such efforts in the governorate. The meeting concluded with the southern governor's remarks in which he expressed thanks and appreciation for the cooperation of the police, the general directorate at the criminal investigation and forensic science and the Ma'an program for their effective role in reinforcing social awareness. He finally added that the meeting represents a platform for further remotely held meetings to take place. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali and naimi commended the distinguished and honorable results achieved by the Kingdom of Bahrain in the Global Education Monitoring Report 2020 issued by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, which was themed Inclusion and Education. He expressed on this occasion appreciation and gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for their constant support for the educational process. He also expressed appreciation for the continuous follow-up of the Deputy Prime Minister, Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa, which contributed to the achievement of numerous educational goals at the global level. The Minister stated that this report monitors international progress of countries in achieving the fourth goal of the Sustainable Development Goals, which is to ensure equality quality, equitability and inclusive education for all and to promote lifelong learning opportunities for all, which focus this year on the topics of integrating people with special needs into education as a manifestation of fairness. The report emphasized Bahrain's excellence in applying inclusive education and care for students with special needs, noting the Ministry of Education's keenness to integrate them into regular classrooms and the many efforts it made in this regard, including providing the appropriate environment, facilities, support means and training of people who work with those groups and spread awareness among members of the society. The Assistant Undersecretary for Social Care and Rehabilitation at the Ministry of Labor and Social Development, Sheikh Aisha bint Ali Al Khalifa, participated in the virtual high-level meeting to support persons with disabilities during COVID-19 in the Arab region. The meeting was organized by the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, ESTWA, in cooperation with the Arab League and the Arab Organization for Persons with Disabilities, AOPD, with the participation of representatives of the Arab League and the special envoy of the United Nations Secretary General on Disability and Accessibility. This meeting aimed to enhance coordination with various partners and governments on addressing the repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on persons with disabilities. It also aimed to identify national initiatives and provide a learning platform to share different experiences and practices that countries have adopted to address the pandemic and its health, social and economic impacts on persons with disabilities and to explore ways to develop a roadmap for the inclusion and empowerment of persons with disabilities and prevent their isolation from society. Addressing the online meeting, the Assistant Undersecretary highlighted Bahrain's efforts to care for and protect about 12,000 persons with disabilities in the midst of the global exceptional circumstances. She said that the Labor and Social Development Ministry continued delivering comprehensive services for people with determination, including the monthly 100 Bahrain dinar allowance, distance, learn, distance learning and training, in addition to other supportive services and programs. She also highlighted the projects implemented by the Labor and Social Development Ministry in partnership with the NGOs, the Interior Ministry and the Information and E-Government Authority, the IGA.
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,524 with 527 recoveries and 508 registered new cases and two deaths. The ministry expressed condolences to the family of the deceased and urged everyone to adhere to the rules and affirmed the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact, moreover covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. Here's Yasmin Ibrahim with the latest business news. Thank you, Sarah. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,279.38 points, marking a decrease of 1.45 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector and investment sector. 58 equity transactions took place with a volume of 5,325,237, worth 532,313 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the investment sector representing 50.66% of the total value of securities traded. Stocks slumped on Wall Street after new coronavirus cases in the U.S. hit their highest level in two months, renewing worries that the economy may take longer to bounce back than investors had hoped. The S&P 500 fell 2.6 percent, wiping out its gains for the week. Markets have been rallying recently on hopes that the U.S. states and regions around the world could continue to lift lockdowns. Cruise lines, which would stand to suffer greatly if travel restrictions are extended, were among the biggest losers. Energy stocks fell along with oil prices. Multiple economic data released by authorities show that China's economy has maintained a trend of steady recovery amid the COVID-19 epidemic so far this year, with the country's scale of reserve assets ranking the first in the world. The state administration of foreign exchange announced that the balance of payments for the first quarter of 2020. The data shows that by the end of March 2020, China's foreign financial assets were valued at 7,635.4 billion U.S. dollars, and the liabilities amounted to 5,498.1 billion US dollars, which means China's net foreign asset value was 2,137.3 billion US dollars. Australia's largest airlines say it plans to cut at least 6,000 jobs and keep 15,000 more workers on extended leave of absence as it tries to survive the economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic. This crisis has still hit us very, very hard. And the impact will be felt for a long time. Particularly, I'm sorry to say, the impact on our people. There are clearly some green shoots domestically. We're planning to be back to 40% of our pre-crisis domestic flying during July, and hopefully more in the months that follow. But we all know that we will be living with COVID-19 for some time. And recent events show we can't take a low infection rate for granted. It is very clear that international travel is likely to be stalled for some considerable time. IATA, the peak body for the airline industry, says it will take more than three years for global travel to return to 2019 levels. The International Monetary Fund has sharply lowered its forecast for global growth this year because it envisions far more severe economic damage from the coronavirus than it just did two months ago. The COVID-19 pandemic pushed economies into a great lockdown that saved lives but also triggered the worst recession since the Great Depression. As countries reopen, the pickup is uneven. On the one hand, pent-up demand is leading to a surge in spending in some sectors like retail. On the other hand, contact-intensive sectors like hospitality, tourism and travel 
remain depressed. So countries that are heavily reliant on these sectors are likely to be deeply impacted for a prolonged period. It was already the worst recession since the Great Depression in April when we had projected growth for 2020 to be at minus 3%, but now at minus 4.9%, that is even, even more strongly true. And no country has been spared. Both emerging market developing economies, advanced economies have all been very badly hit during this crisis. We describe the recovery as still highly uncertain in terms of the strength of the recovery. So while we could say that maybe the world has bottomed out for now and we are in a recovery phase, but still the strength of the recovery is highly uh, uncertain because there is no solution yet to the health crisis. So outcomes could be on the plus positive or the negative side. You could have better news on treatments and vaccines and the improvement could be even faster. Uh, but it could also be worse if indeed the virus cannot be contained and you have second waves. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. And that is it from the business desk. It's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Yasmin. Sitting atop a cliff at an elevation of just under 1,500 meters, Bosnia's highest village is the perfect refuge from the modern world, appended by the coronavirus pandemic, or so its residents claim. The villagers still spend the better part of each year in their small stone houses on Birlesnica mountain, tending to their land and flocks. They're often dressed in handmade clothes, the likes of which have been worn in their village for centuries. Its remote nature has historically been Lokomir strength in times of war and other crisis. This year, Lokomir has not seen too many tourists, but villagers aren't concerned by that and instead enjoy the slow pace of mountain life. <laughs> 